I think I finally found an Android image that's going to work with this PC. This is the eMachine T1090 with the 900 megahertz Intel Celeron Coppermine processor in it, and I believe it has 384 megabytes of RAM in it at this time. It's really late right now, guys, so forgive me if I uh, start to slip up here. I'm definitely not going to get this video out tonight. Probably going to upload it sometime over the weekend. But this is Android version 1.0. Point six. I started at 4.4 and digressed all the way down to version 1.6. I did not try 2.2 yet, so I'm going to try that out. And 2.2 is a no-go. Let's see what we can do with 1.6. <laughs> to another installment of AA Computers and Technology. I'm going to try to keep this video pretty quick because I'm just using it as a stepping stone to getting Android working on that dual Pentium 3 machine I have in the back. So we really need to see how Android handles two physical processors, if it can handle two physical processors, uh, and Pentium 3s, two physical Pentium 3s. So that would be really neat. But I was trying to create some little stepping stones to actually getting there. I tried a Pentium 4 machine. I tried all of those Android versions on uh, all three of my Pentium 4 machines, and I could get nothing none of those to work. So I pulled out this little eMachine T1090 with a Intel Celeron Coppermine processor and 384 megabytes of RAM and I tried all of the um, all of the Android versions again from 4.4 all the way down to 1.6 and I got all the way down to 1.6 and 1.6 actually worked. So we're going to be checking that out today. I'm going to take you into the system first. We'll check out the system hardware and then I'll boot up into Android 1.6. Of course, I don't have internet connectivity or anything like that. I was trying to get it up and working, but uh, had absolutely no success. The Android version is just so old and uh, hardware compatibility is eh. Ah, uh, and the wiring in the system is an absolute mess. I need to grab some zip ties and secure all this. But starting from the bottom, you can see the video card that we will be using today. This is the Vision Tech 7000 PCI video card with 64 megabytes of VRAM on board. Uh, I always get complaints about this card. This is the beefiest video card I have. I would like to use something a little bit better, like a 6200, but I do not have a PCI version of the 6200 on hand. There is a USB 2.0 card right above that, and that's because we are running Android 1.6 off a USB flash drive. We will not be using this hard drive today because this hard drive has my copy of Windows XP, which I do use um, for uh, putting stuff onto floppy disks, and I would do not want to wipe this. The 900 megahertz Intel Celeron Coppermine processor can be found right below the power supply and the RAM is right over here. I'm not sure if you can see that too well. I'm not sure if this is PC100 or PC133. I'm going to pop one of these sticks out to take a look. Yep, it is PC133, so we are packing 384 megabytes of PC133 SD RAM. Let's power this thing on and boot into Android. And of course, we're going to take a quick stop to the BIOS to check out all the system specifications once more so you guys don't think I am lying to you. I'm going to pop the machine on now. It is a bit noisy, so hopefully it's not making too much noise on camera. There we go. Okay, you can see the uh, Celeron 900 megahertz processor is showing up there and our memory is reading 384 megabytes. I'm gonna go ahead and exit. Exit discarding changes, because we didn't really make any. And I have plop in the floppy drive right now, so we should boot into the plop interface, and then I can select to boot from the USB flash drive. And uh, this is the PC that I actually took the CMOS battery out to replace the dead one in my server, so there's no longer a good CMOS battery in here, unfortunately. But it doesn't really matter because I don't use the system that much. Alright, so we are booting into Plop. Going to select to boot from the USB flash drive. And I think like every one out of five times I try to do this, it freezes. But this time it actually looked like it worked. Oh! Now I needed it to stop right here so I can manually set the video mode because when it does it automatically it just does not pick the right one and things come out really odd. I'll post a screenshot right on this clip so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But I'm going to go ahead and modify the kernel uh, arguments and I'm going to add VGA equals ask. And then we can boot from there. 
All right, enter to select a video mode, and the uh, best one that I found was 317, uh, 1024 by 768 at uh, 16 bits. So I'm going to select 317. That's And as you can see, we are now at the, well, I was going to say desktop, but I'm not sure if that really applies here. I guess a uh, home screen would be a better term for this. But as far as usability goes, um, it's pretty much overall a very painful user experience. I mean, it works, but it crashes constantly. I have used tablets with 1.6 with similar hardware, uh, 1 gigahertz, single core ARM processor, which with whatever video they had on board there. Um, but this version of Android just isn't optimized for this system configuration, so it performs very poorly. Alright, so I have my wireless Logitech keyboard hooked up to the computer right now. It's actually working pretty well with this version of Android. Let's go ahead, pop open a couple applications, play around with the operating system to get a general feeling for the performance of Android on this system configuration. Oh gosh, it's probably been a few years since I've used Donut, so let's see what the heck we can do with this version of Android. Can I uh, move the home page over? Okay, there we go, so I can swipe between pages. That's actually pretty smooth given that uh, the video is not optimized for this video card. Can I drag icons around? Yes, I can. Drag and drop. There we go. Uh, I'm going to open up the side menu right here, see so what applications are installed. Uh, do we have any sort of games here? Obviously the Play Store is not going to be installed on here, uh, but let's see if I can run a game. Snake on a phone sounds like a game. I'm going to pop you open. Let's see. Press up to play. I pressed up. There we go. Alright, I can actually use my uh, keyboard for this. Cool. Oh, and this is a very, very, very slow game. I don't want to make you guys sit through this, but as you can see, this is actually working just fine. Um, so I'm going to back out of this. Just gonna hit the home button on my keyboard, go back into the menu, are there any other games on here? Uh, that might be a little bit more interesting, maybe? Jet Boy, that also looks like a game icon. Oh, and it's uh, not going full screen here. Alright, help Jet Boy get through the asteroid field. I've never played this. Okay, use your fire button. What's my fire button? Uh, oh my goodness, I have no idea how to play this game. Yeah, I'm, I'm pressing all the buttons on the keyboard, and I have absolutely no clue. Um, those, uh, those directions weren't clear at all, and it looks like I'm about to get completely destroyed. Well, what? It's doing it by itself? Okay, I'm actually confused <laughs> about what's going on here. Um, oh my goodness, and as you can see, it's one of those things where it just crashed, unfortunately. Um, let me go ahead and see if there's anything else... It looks like there's one more game on here, Lunar Lander. I don't want to take up too much time with games, so I'm going to, uh, you know, mess with this for like one or two seconds, but this is actually pretty smooth. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do here either. Uh, oh my goodness, and I died. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to spend a couple more minutes and see what else is on here. It looks like there is a browser already installed, so let me open this up. I'm not sure what it's based off of. Retrieving sign in details. Well, you're not going to be able to do that because we do not have network connectivity. Okay, no network connection. I just wanted to see if it would open. We're not going to be able to do any web browsing because, once again, no network connectivity. Gonna get out of this. Pop the side panel back open. Let's go into settings. Just scroll around here. Um, and is there anything really interesting uh, in the settings? I I don't really see anything that I want to touch on. Uh, I tried I tried to connect to Wi-Fi once again, but that was unsuc unsuccessful. Did not uh, detect my wireless dongle, and uh, I tried to get the drivers for it and you know everything else, but it just wasn't working. So I'll try harder with the Pentium 3. Maybe I could get a new version of Android to work on the dual Pentium 3s, and uh, maybe with that new version of Android, I'll have better luck with the uh, wireless um, capabilities. This particular image has a file manager, music player, and video player built in. I'm going to pop all those open real quick. Alright, so folder empty. What happens when we go to the home directory? Alright, so you can see all of the uh, data in our home directory right there. Let me go back, escape, 
pop the side panel back open so we can get to our applications and go into the video player. I don't think anything's going to happen and nothing did happen because we don't have any videos on the system nor do we have an external device plugged in uh, to play videos off of such as a flash drive. Music, there might be some music on here because sometimes, you know, it does ship with random music or pictures, you know, uh, the developers try to, uh, to promote his friend's mixtape or something like that, um, but there's nothing on here. So, I'm gonna pop it back open. Is there anything else I can uh, really uh, touch on here that would be interesting? I don't see anything. Camera, what happens when you open up camera since there's not actually a camera on the system? Yeah, you know what, it just crashed, okay. And if I do get Android up and running on that dual Pentium 3 machine, I do plan on installing a couple more applications. If I can't get internet connectivity to work, I'll probably just download the APKs and install it to this system. That way, hopefully, we can get a newer version to work with this. I'm sorry if you guys found this a little bit boring uh, just because of the lack of applications that we actually have to play with on this particular system. Uh, but I think that's going to pretty much conclude this video. I'm hoping to get that dual Pentium 3 video out sometime during my break, so you should see it coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Um, that's going to be about it for this video. I'm going to try to keep this video below 5 minutes. That's probably not going to happen. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can post a comment in the comment section. Please do not forget to like this video. If you didn't like something about please post a comment in the comment section about said thing you did not like because it is really annoying when people do not leave critique and just dislike videos. Um, it gets on my nerves, you know, I, I, I appreciate the critique, it helps out a lot. And of course, do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.